What's good, everybody? It's me, Tim Keys, and today I want to talk about Korg's newly released Micro Korg, the VST. Now, I just found about <laughs> I can't talk. I just found out about this today, actually, um, scrolling on Instagram, and I saw that Korg had a promo. And yeah, man. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm, Korg has really been, you know, stepping up their game when it comes to updating their library of different synthesizers and whatnot. And, you know, early on the other side of this year, they had the, the Triton Extreme. They had a couple of different plugins, and now they've included the Micro Korg as well as the Chaos Pad and the Electrive. I'm not going to do that in this video. I just kind of want to focus on the Micro Korg <clears throat> and talk about it briefly and go over a couple patches and some of the features and forgive me if i don't go over everything or you know i don't get all the stuff right because it's been a while since i've used a micro -corg. so yeah man um you got your sequencer right here step sequence turn it on and off now Let's keep going. Let's see what yeah. So it's been a while, like I said, since I played with the micro cork. I used to own one years and years ago, and I got rid of it, traded mine in actually, so I could get the Moss Engine. Because at the time I was like, well, the Moss Engine gave you more voices and you had more flexibility in sound or at least for what i was looking for because you had you know physical modeling in the moss engine but you know the micro korg in its own right is a physical model engine it's analog modeling and so that means that there is no you know this doesn't use samples to create its sound generally speaking outside of the the dwgs waveforms that are included but <clears throat> beyond that it uses analog modeling to you know generate its sounds um, Analog modeling is a form of physical modeling, uses mathematical algorithms to simulate the behavior of various instruments. In this case, it is simulating the behavior of an analog based synthesizer. Um, <clears throat> Sorry about that. I don't hear any drop off in the polyphony. That is great. Um, the real micro Korg only had, I think it had like, sheesh, four voices of polyphony, if I'm not mistaken. So if you try to do any like seventh chords or anything like that, and then put some keys or some melody, melody lines on top of it, yeah, you were in bad shape. You had to stick to those, you know, three note chords, maybe four notes at best. And then if you wanted to stack it, you would have to have a separate track with the melody line going on because you couldn't do it all at once. Now, this has a very bright sound. Um, <clears throat> sheesh, can't remember. This came out in 2000, 2002. Yeah, so this was like during the, the, the earlier stages of analog modeling. And yeah, this definitely has more of a brighter sound. It sounds good and you can get it, you know, you can get it to do some stuff. But in my opinion, out the box, you're not going to get this to sound like a Moog or a Prophet. But I need to stop playing that, <laughs> this asset base. Let's see what you got going on. So you can click, you know, in the box. Let's go back, click in the box. And you have, you know, all of the different categories that you would find, just like you would if you had the, the hardware unit. But you also have it a lot easier to find what you are looking for.
Can't complain about that. That sounds really nice. I will say right out the back as I'm looking at this. Um, I kind of feel like this would be a lot easier to program compared to the microcorg, just because you had to do a lot more menu diving with the the original microcorg. You had, you know, you had the knobs and whatnot. Your basic knobs were laid out in front, and you had like your LCD LED numbers. Pardon me. <laughs> you had your LED numbers, and so you could kind of get your figures that way. But I like the fact that they got everything laid out here. So it makes it a lot easier to kind of see what you're doing and you can just kind of get to it. Of course, you don't have the tangibility. I will say I can definitely appreciate the increased polyphony that they give you. All right, so I'll just do a basic overview. Microcorg has your basic saw, square, triangle, sine, waves. You also have your box waves, <clears throat> but then you also have the DWGS waveforms that were popular in some of the other synthesizer. I can't remember. <laughs> I can't remember which one was like Korg DWGS. I think it was the 8000 um that gave you a wide variety of tones those waveforms have been included here and so that's a very welcomed addition because that is going to extend your sound palette in terms of you know what you can do you got two oscillators so you can you know you can get busy with the type of stuff you want interestingly enough it looks like yep oscillator one has access to all the goodies. Oscillator 2 is just your standard waveform oscillator, and you can adjust semitones and tuning. Let's get a thicker sound. I'm trying to see if you can do it with oscillator 1. That would be nice. If not, that's okay. You got a noise. Oscillator. That's cool. You can set it to mono, uh, polyphony, polyphonic, pardon me. You do the unison. Fatten up your sounds. You got some effects. You got phaser. Ensemble, you have your flanger chorus, you have your delay, reverb, and you have your EQ. So, yeah, man, it's pretty straightforward. You can even use the vocoder. Don't ask me how you would do it because I have no idea. Cool that you have that feature and then these you have to have the audio signal i'm assuming that you would have to record something in your sequencer and have this routed in somehow so that it can do that <clears throat> and it's okay yeah let's go over a couple of more of these patches let's go back in here let's go into Electronica, let's see what we got for percussion.
All right, let's see what we got. Not bad. They give you some uh, distortion. You got your different filter types low pass, 12 dB, 24 dB, band pass, high pass. You got your resonance, envelope intensity, key tracking. Simple filter envelope and amplitude envelope. That's cool. <clears throat> Your mod matrix in the middle. Two LFOs you can work with. I think that's neat. Um, I don't really have any complaints about this. Um, except for now, I'm kind of like, man, should I even bother to buy another micro cord when I can just get this and have more polyphony? I would say, you know depending on your wallet and your budget and what you're looking for, you know, get both. <laughs> like if you're somebody that travels and you just love the sound of micro cord and you like that live performance feel, having that microphone that you stick into that vocoder and, and press those keys and do it off the cuff and live, I would say, man, go, go get it. Um, because yeah, you, to me, there's nothing like experiencing that, you know, playing and, you know, having that that hands on tangible feel of an instrument. But if we're just talking about you want the sound. Then I would go with the plug in and I mean, the plug in doesn't disappoint. Everything is laid out nice and neat. You're going to get all the sounds of the micro -corg and then some. And the you know you got added polyphony, and everything's in front of you. And let's see, we have Michael Korg, Michael Korg S. So they definitely have added some stuff you can even put your own in. Of course, I don't know if you can take like the old, like the old Korg Michael Korg editor that they had. I don't know if you can use that to import the sounds into this. I am not certain. That is a Korg question. But, you know, for what this is, I think it's great. I think it's another good way to expand your sound palette and get, you know, a good quality virtual instrument. And this thing is, it's kind of weird to think about it, but it's it's a classic in its own right. Like, this came out back in 2000 or 2002. 20 years and it's still in production. Like, you can, you can get one now on the Korg website. I'm pretty sure. If not, don't bite my head off. And you can always get one on eBay. But yeah, man, these things have been out for quite some time. So it's kind of cool to see that they've put these into a you know plug-in format. And they're now continuing to expand their collection of different VSTs that you can work with. So yeah, man. I'm not going to go into anything beyond that. Yo, man. So yeah, let me what you uh, let me know what you think. If you plan on getting this, or do you think the the hardware version is more of what you prefer? Yeah, man. Let me know. Thank you for watching this video. I'm out. Peace.